Hey everyone, welcome to today's video from Camcorder Homestead. So in this week's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the process of making cold processed goat's milk soap. We have the amazing benefit of collecting our goat's milk right here on the homestead. But if you however do not have access to fresh goat's milk, you can still make this soap by purchasing powdered dehydrated goat's milk online. Making goat's milk soap really is a basic process. However, I do advise you to only make it if you're able to give your undivided attention. Uh, speaking from experience, I've had way too many times where I've attempted to make this and I have had countless distractions with kids and what have you. We will start out by measuring our lye. So in this recipe, we need 4.9 ounces. And when handling your lye in this state, I suggest that you wear some kind of hand protection as if it comes in contact with your skin, there's a possibility that it may burn you. All right, so once you have it measured out, we are going to pull out our partially frozen slushy goat's milk. So prior to making your soap, I suggest that you freeze your goat's milk in a Ziploc for approximately two to four hours. And we do this because if we were to just add our lye in with refrigerated temperature milk, it would scorch the milk. So given that it's a little slushy consistency, that prevents scorching from occurring. Now that we have our lye combined with our milk, we want to go ahead and stir that. And we're going to continue to stir this mixture until the goat's milk is completely melted, essentially, with the lye. So when this milk is added in with the lye, the lye will start to warm up the milk, creating the milk to melt. And in some cases, it will change color a yellow or a bright orange. Once we are done with mixing those together, we can move on to the next step, which is measuring out our oils. We will start out by measuring three ounces of almond oil, then two ounces of castor oil, 10 ounces of olive oil, six ounces of palm oil, 10 ounces of coconut oil, three ounces of shea butter, and lastly, one ounce of beeswax. Once we have all of our oils combined in our pot, we can go ahead and put it onto the stove top and begin melting our oils together with using beeswax that will be one of the last things that will melt in your pot. So I find that I have to heat up my oils to around 150 to get my beeswax to completely melt. Once your oils have all melted, you can take it off the stove top and we are going to let our oils cool down to around 110 to 120 degrees. And once we have our oils cooled down, we can go ahead and add our lye and milk solution with our oils. Next, we will be blending all of our ingredients together in our pot with a stick blender and you will continue to mix until you see trace. So trace is once you bring your stick blender up to the top and your soap actually begins to leave a little bit of a trail on the surface of your oils. Once you see trace on the top, we are now done with mixing and this is where you would add in your scents if you would like to add a scent to your soap. So I find that Brambleberry is a great option for its scented soap as it really comes out in the soap. If you were to use just a generic essential oil from say the co-op, you're gonna have to use a lot 
a lot of essential oil to even bring out the scent in the soap. So I suggest that you go with a scent that is specifically designed for soap making. For this recipe, I will be using circular soap molds, but you can use whatever molds you prefer. I have found that this recipe will yield around 12 soap bars at 4 ounces each. And really, that's it. You have completed the process. You will now want to refrigerate your soaps for 24 hours in the refrigerator or the freezer. This will prevent your soaps from cracking as they start to dry. And once you have gotten to that 24 hour mark, you will want to pull your soaps out of your mold and begin curing them. For the curing process, you will want to place your soaps in a well-ventilated space where air can pass through on each side of your soap molds. Here you can see what my design is for curing my soaps, and you will need to cure your soaps for around two weeks before you can then use them. After much patience, your soaps are finally done. Here I have showed you my simple design for wrapping up my soaps. I actually sell mine on an Etsy account. And if you are interested in checking out the product which I make here in this video, you can go ahead and check that out yourself. Or if you would like to give it a shot with making it yourself, go ahead and do so and let me know how it turns out for you.